Hey everyone, Brittany here from By Brittany Goldwyn, and today I'm going to be showing you all about how you can make your own SVG files for your personal cutting machine needs. I have a Cricut, one of the ways I'll be showing you um, how to make SVG files you can use on other cutting machines, but the second way is only for Cricut, so take a look either way. So here's the homepage to my blog, and the first way I'll be showing you to make an SVG file out of an image file that is usually a JPEG or a PNG file, I'm going to be using my logo up here. So you can see it's a pretty simple looking file. It has pretty high contrast in the color variations, which makes this a pretty easy process. So the first way I'm going to be using um, this free SVG image converter software online. So you don't have to download anything. It's web-based software. There are tons of these that you can choose from. This is just the first one that came up a while ago when I searched this. And so it's the one that I use and I get pretty good results with it if I start with a good image. So to get started, I'm going to drag in a file that I just have here on my desktop. You can see this is a PNG file of my logo and then it uploads it here. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm not going to change any of these options because they actually do a pretty good job. I'm going to click start conversion and it's converting the image to an SVG file right now. So instead of downloading it again, I'm going to bring up what the converted SVG file looks like here. You can see it turned out really great. It captured all of these little spots in the letters that um, some other images might have a hard time capturing. It did take out the two layers of color, but that's fine since I'll be using this as a cut file on my Cricut. I don't really care about the colors. If I want different colors, um, I'll cut them in different types of vinyl. Um, this wouldn't work for a print then cut feature if you wanted to retain the colors on your image, but this works perfectly fine for iron on vinyl, regular vinyl, all that sorts of stuff. However, I wanna show you what it's like if I use a much smaller, lower quality graphic and if I run it through um, this software using this graphic. So I'm gonna drag it in here and then it's going to convert. And if I don't change any of these options down here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it would look like if I converted it. So this is what it would look like. So not nearly as good as the result you get using a larger, higher quality image. Um, it's not usable at all. You can see it didn't even pick up all of the letters. The font looks warped and it definitely didn't pick up these little um, smaller internal areas in the file. So I want to highlight one more thing over here. Sometimes I go in and I adjust this thing called the speckles threshold and if you hover over the eye it will show you the minimum length in pixels of a closed line to be recognized as a vertical path. Basically what that means it says here for example the inner part of a letter A. If your converter is not picking up those smaller areas in your image, try lowering this value to see if that helps. It helps me a lot of the time. And again, this is free software doing it automatically for you. So it's not gonna work 100% of the time on some of those lower quality or more complex images, but it is worth a shot. So even though it says one to one million here, the lowest that you can do is eight. So I always just put it as eight and then when I click convert here, I did it beforehand, so I'll show you what it looks like. So it did a better job converting it, but it's still not really usable for me because if you'll look at what the higher quality conversion was, the lines are super crisp, the font looks exactly like my actual logo file. Um, this is a comparison for my actual logo image file that I converted and the SVG version. And then if you look at the converted smaller version, it just does not look that good. So even though it is a scale graphic in SVG form. It did not retain all of the crisp lines of my logo. So I definitely, definitely recommend using as big and as high of quality photo as you can for this option. So I want to tell you some different things to look out for when you're trying to figure out if your image will be successful with an online image converter like this. So I'm going to show you this little cat file here. So this is just a free picture of a cat that I downloaded um, from Canva. And you can see when you look at the picture of the cat, it doesn't have an outline all around it. It has these cute outlines here. So as an image like this, it looks great and you could use it for different things. But if you were to run a file like this through the SVG converter, no matter what 
settings that you change down here, you will end up with something that looks like this. So definitely not the best option for more complex images. You can see it really just picked up all of the different darker lines here. And even when I messed with the settings, it didn't change it because there is no outline on this file. That does that makes it not a very good candidate for converting to an SVG to use on a cutting machine. So check out your images. If you want to use something like a cat, make sure you look for something that has a good solid outline and isn't too detailed. So you can see I have a new blank canvas open here in Design Space. And to upload an image, I'm going to click Upload and then Upload Image. And I will drag my logo file here into it. This is a very simple file, so I'll just click simple here. The other options, moderately complex and complex, they work with varying levels of success. Then I will click continue and it takes me to the select and erase screen. There are a couple different ways that you can erase the spots that you don't want to be converted into your SVG file. It defaults to this magic tool right here. And the first thing that I usually do is I click the biggest amount of space I can with this to see how much it takes away. So you can see on this file, it did a really great job in removing almost all of the background. Um, and then all I have to do now is go in and click these other little spaces inside of the letters. Let's see, did I get everything? Yes, I did. And then I'm done. I can also crop up here. Um, and then if there's large areas that are difficult to use the magic tool with, you can click this eraser up here and change the size of this eraser tool from small to large. And that can just help speed up work a little bit. Say I decided I didn't want this side. I could just erase that right there. It makes it super easy, but I do want that side. So I'm going to put it back. All right. So now that I'm done, I'm going to click continue and you can see I can save it as a print then cut image here. So that's a feature specific to Cricut that you couldn't get using that online SVG converter that retains the colors here, which is really awesome for logos and things like that. If you wanted to do a print then cut, you'd have to print and then um, use a special type of vinyl that you print on. I'm not going to be doing that today. Today, I'm just going to be focusing on using a save as a cut image image option. When I click save, it will take it, put it right here. I can click it and insert it into my canvas. And there you go. There it is. So I can use this. Um, you can see it actually did, it did an okay job. I like to do both to see which one does a better job. And now what I can do, um, is I can upload the SVG that I converted online using the free tool can upload that here, drag and drop the SVG in just to see which one I like better. So I can add that as well and put them next to each other. And in this case, it's pretty clear. I actually really like the one that I converted with the SVG converter. And that usually isn't the case. Cricut usually does a really, really good job of removing the background. Honestly, they look so similar that once I cut them into vinyl and iron them onto my apron, it they'll be indistinguishable. The crisp lines won't matter as much as they do on a computer screen, but you can see they both do a pretty good job. And since I showed you guys how um, important it was to do a, um, a bigger, higher quality file size on the SVG converter, I want to show you the success rate in Cricut for removing the background as well. So again, I've dragged and dropped it in. I'm going to click simple here because it's the same simple image. Continue. And now to select an erase, you can see it's much, much smaller. So to work with this, I'm going to zoom in as much as I can, even though it's blurry, that's okay. I default to my select and erase tool. So I'll click that. I can get in here with my select and erase tool and erase everything. And you can see how pixelated it is. But remember that when you do this, you're creating a, um, an SVG file, which stands for scalable vector graphics. So you will be able to go in and click here, um, save as print and cut image and be able to scale it very large or very small or go with a save as a cut image. So you can see here as print then cut image, it actually did a really good job of retaining how the logo already looked um, when it was an image. But as a cut image, it had the same difficulties that the free SVG converter did. It actually looks pretty much the same as that one did. Um, so even though it is scalable, you can see it just does 
does not look very good. It's not crisp. The letters are all kind of melting together. It literally looks like the logo is melting. So again, to use this feature, use the biggest, highest quality graphic you can with the biggest differentiation in colors. So by that, I mean, if you have an image that has lots of different gray tones in it, that probably isn't the best image to use. Things with clear lines and differenti differentiations between different colors are the best. Um, I also want to show you guys how unsuccessful that cat image was that we used in the SVG converter. So for this one, I'm going to put moderately complex um, and then click continue. So you'll be able to see here that I can erase the background and it looks fine. But when I go to erase the body to come up with an outline, since there is no outline, it just takes the entire body away and it doesn't leave a line in here like some other images will. However, if you wanted to use a, um, a clip art type image for the print then cut feature, that actually does work really well. You can see here when you click continue, and you look at the save as print then cut image, it gives you a pretty good looking image to use. And the cat blob here as the cut image is just not very good at all. I wanna go back and show you what it would actually look like if I tried to remove all of the areas, all of this body area that I wanted to um, <clears throat> not have in the image for me. And you just get this weird, even weirder looking thing. So I'm gonna go back, click back, 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 back. So I have the body. <clears throat> I'm gonna save it as a print then cut image and insert it. So if I did wanna use this as a print then cut image, um, I could print this on like a sticker or something and um, then cut it out. But I do want to make one really important note about working with different types of clip art. Whatever you're working with, make sure that it is either a license for commercial use or that it's something that you either own the copyright to or it has some sort of open copyright that allows you to use it. So most images you find online just through a Google search, it's not safe to use them that way, especially if you're going to be using the designs you create from the images for commercial purposes, like selling merchandise with them on it or putting them on a blog or website. So always make sure to check the license on the clip art before you use it. So I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. There are many ways to convert files to use them um, for Cricut cutting projects. And these are just two of my favorites for how to convert images or clip art files to cut files to use on your Cricut. And here's my finished apron and I think it turned out pretty great. Let me know if you have any questions and happy Cricuting!